I'm a vegan, and this is a rant about Christians. Oh yeah, here we go. Another vegan atheist coming after the Christians, right? Not really, no. I was raised with Christian values. I went to a Christian school. And yeah, I was an atheist for a long time. But if I were to put any identity on myself right now, I'd say I'm a secular Christian, which might sound weird, but I'll explain. When I was a child, I was really interested in the stories and the teachings of Jesus. I was this nerdy little kid that would go to the school library to read about Jesus. But a bad experience with a religious studies teacher turned me off religion entirely. What happened was I asked him if he had proof for the existence of God, and he completely lost his temper, embarrassed me, made a fool of himself, made a fool of me. It turned me off religion for the vast majority of my life. That was up until recently when I watched the new documentary, Christ Spiracy, which is not out yet, by the way, but it's coming out next year. Christ Spiracy is a documentary about Jesus, and it exposes some truths about Jesus that the church has been trying to hide for the last 2,000 years. These truths are actually good things about Jesus. It actually shows Jesus in a new light, shows that he was more empathetic, more compassionate, and an even stronger person than we all know him to be. So after watching that and learning all this about Jesus, it reinvigorated my interest in him and his teachings and made me realize that actually I'd always been inspired by his teachings. I'd always been following his footsteps as closely as I could be, just not consciously over these last years. I realized that I am very much aligned with Christian values. I want to be more Christ-like and I'm very empathetic to the Christian message. I've spoken with a lot of Christians over my 14 years as a vegan. Almost every single time I've discussed veganism with Christians, I've been met with an incredible level of defensiveness. Christians, just like everyone else, get really, really defensive when discussing eating meat and other animal products. Even though there's nothing against veganism in the Bible, one can be a good practicing Christian and be vegan. But most Christians still obsess over meat, dairy, and eggs. It's got to the point where I honestly believe that if I sprouted wings and a halo appeared over my head, and I said, hey, you can be just as healthy as you are now without abusing and killing animals, you should be vegan, Christians would still argue with me. Despite the fact that I think most Christians would agree with me, that although humans are made in the image of God, according to Christian theology, other animals would be next in that lineup. Other animals may not have a soul, according to Christians, but they imitate beings that do have a soul. Us. Some of the animals we love our lives with have spent such a long time with us that they start to act in ways that are similar to how we act. They can read our body language. They can show us sympathy when we're sad or defend us when we're in danger. They even celebrate with us when we're happy. And there are plenty of stories of animals rescuing humans from situations where otherwise they would have definitely died. There's just been some new research done on farmed animals showing that their emotions and their level of understanding is far more complex than we ever could have known. And these are all qualities that every Christian in the world would agree are beautiful and Christ-like. Empathy, compassion helping one another. And on top of that, all these other animals are capable of feeling joy and happiness and also sadness, pain and suffering, much like we are. So when we take all of that and we look at it all in one big bunch together, why does it still take so much effort to convince a Christian to go vegan? Why is it so difficult to convince Christians to stop paying people to stab these wonderful animals. Well, because the Bible gives me permission to do whatever I want with animals. Does it? Yeah, it gives me dominion. That means I can do whatever I want. Do parents have dominion over their own children? Yeah. Does that mean they can cook them and eat them? No. Dominion means authority. To have authority over someone or something. When this authority is over a living being that is completely and utterly hopeless and defenseless against you because you are intellectually or physically superior to them, that means you have the responsibility to be their steward, to be their caretaker. I think Jesus may be able to put it in better words. He might say something like, you are supposed to be the shepherd to the innocent and the defenseless, not a heartless murderer. After all, aren't compassion, mercy, and stewardship traditional Christian values? Then why is the idea of compassion and mercy for animals so controversial in Christianity? It seems to me that we're not dealing with Christians who dismiss veganism because of the Bible. We're dealing with Christians who dismiss veganism because they like the way they live and they try to use the Bible 
to justify it. How do you think Jesus would feel about people using his words to try to justify their selfish habits? Christians invoking the teachings of Jesus to try and justify stabbing animals in the throat for a burger. Really? Obviously, I can't speak for what Jesus would say, but we can assume he wouldn't be too chuffed, right? All this stubbornness and arrogance when it comes to how we treat the other animals we share the world with, all of this negative, violent attitude towards them, that's the opposite of Christ-like. I think you do your religion and your saviour a massive disservice when you would try to use his name to justify doing such horrible, violent things to animals. Whether you like it or not, you're paying people to abuse, mutilate, and kill innocent, defenseless animals for nothing but convenience and taste. And you're doing it in the name of your peaceful God. There's nothing peaceful about that. Christmas is coming up in a couple of days. Christmas is supposed to be a holy celebration of the birth of the most peaceful and righteous man who ever lived. And for us, it's supposed to be a time of reflection. A time to think about how we can do better and be better people. To extend love, mercy and compassion to everyone, animals included. The spirit and the message of Christmas does not align with the abuse and killing of turkeys, pigs, cows, and any other animals. And Christian values don't align with the abuse and killing of animals at any time of the year. I've been there. I've been on the ground. I've seen the horrors. I've seen the violence that I'm talking about. I'm committed to trying to change the world for these animals that we share it with. Are you going to join me on that? Please share this video in places where people who need to see it can see it. And if you have any questions about veganism, get down in the comments and ask them. I'll do my best and my followers will do our best to get back to you and give you all the information you need. Alternatively, you can send me an email at itsdavidrams at gmail.com. And again, I'll do my best to get you all the information you need, set you off on the right path. I hope you have an amazing Christmas, spending quality time with all of your loved ones. And I especially hope you have a Christmas without all of this cruelty and violence to animals.